Hello everybody, this is Retro Beard here. How have you all been? Good I hope. I hope everything's been going well for you. I um, hope these hard times aren't too much for you and you're all you're all faring well. Um, we've got plenty of reasons to keep positive and not lose hope or get depressed in these times. You know, for every reason that we can worry or, or get down about, there's 10 reasons to be positive and happy and to be grateful. So that's my thoughts. Um, well, I'm going to start today um, straight to um, the point with my uh, my sort of purchases and things to show you this week. There's not there's not lots, but there's a few nice bits. Um, I'll start with my vintage PlayStation Three wireless headset. I don't know if you guys um, and girls remember this. It's a um, it's a Bluetooth one. It was back in the day. It was used for voice chatting games and all that. And um, I got it because it was cheap, still boxed, good condition, and there's a possibility I'll need it. And it just, I just thought it was cool. And yeah, piece of history. Um, as I said before, I wasn't a massive um, PlayStation 3 guy back in the day. I was more Xbox 360. So these items intrigued me because, of course, I had the Xbox counterparts. So yeah. I'm a bit behind the times, but that's what retro gaming is. Yeah. Next is a real beauty. This is something I've not really played with yet, but I've got it. Um, it's um, it's an actual um, uh, Rad 2X for the Sega Mega Drive. I've not even really properly opened it yet, so hopefully this is the right thing. It is. That was a close call. This is a pretty rare beauty at the minute. These things are in supply. Last time there was a pre-order back early in this year in the autumn slash spring. There was a pre-order so I, I was at home during the height of the lockdown and I thought, you know what, I'll cheer myself up, I'll get this. Because even though I've got a fantastic retro free come up for my Mega Drive and Genesis gameplay, I thought it'd be nice sometimes to you know, dust off the old console and um, play it on original hardware it, and, and you know, just also see the differences and the nostalgia. So I got this and admittedly, I haven't, um, I'll give it another close up, okay. I haven't really seen what it can do, but I'm going to. I'm hoping to use it. So this is quite an honor, I mean, I've got. I've also got one of these um, for the PlayStation One, and I do use that, and that it's quite nice actually. It makes it look good on my LCD 4K TV. Yeah, and this is this was from RetroGamingCables.co.uk, and they're a fantastic place. Um, I recommend having a look because they've got cables of various types for a lot of old games, old games consoles. So that's good for either if you've got a CRT and you want to get the best picture possible. Or you want a simple replacement for a broken cut or lost cable, or if you want the best you can, you know, the best you can afford. I mean, I'm not up to date with their range, but last time I looked, they were even doing, doing or going to do component cables for PlayStation One, which that's fantastic. So, so it's another way of connecting to your scaler or even straight into your TV. So I, I would like one at one point. I am curious, but I want to be, you know, to be to a check when they're in stock and all that and be make sure I'm really ready because obviously premium premium good quality cables aren't cheap so it helps to use them and so the fact I've not used this is a bit naughty of me but it's cool perhaps when um, I'm ready to truly open it and play it I'll do a proper unboxing and I'll get my Mega Drive out and um, we'll give it a go this is for the Mega Drive Model 1 you know the HD model as they call it the big the big Mega Drive, so um, they do a separate one for the Mega Drive 2. I don't know if there's a converter cable, so but, but I want uh, my favorite Mega Drive is my original time, not my Mega Drive 2, because I think the output and the sound is generally better on the first model. Of course, any experts correct me if I'm wrong because it, it could be me hallucinating. Next is a game I've wanted for a while NBA Jam on the PlayStation 2. I love NBA Jam games. 
I've got to admit it, in my shame, I do need to rebuy it for the Mega Drive, and I wouldn't mind the Super Nintendo version. Um, I wouldn't even mind the 32X version, that was pretty cool with the big heads. Um, the, the PlayStation 1 had a really good version of it, and, still, and I think I still need that, I'm not sure, I lose track. But this is a good one, because obviously the PlayStation 2's got quite nice graphics, and this has got a six-player multi-tap mode, where you plug in two multi-taps. Now, that's living the dream. I mean, I haven't got five friends who, who in my life who would do that, but, you know, I often love the the principle of the fact it can be done, or if ever things in your life change and you, you have a bigger crowd around you want to play. Um, that's been the irony of my life. When I've had the crowd to play with, I've not had the kit, because it's either not been invented or I've not been able to afford it or it's not been available. And then when I have the kit, I don't have the crowd. Is that not, like... Ironic, as it, that's why irony makes me laugh because it's so ironic. Now I've got multiplayer kit, multi taps, I've got control pads, the gear, I've got the games, but no one to play. So it's uh, it don't make me sad, it makes me laugh. So there you go. Um, and my final thing to show this week is Metal Gear Solid Free Snake Eater for the PlayStation 2, the original version. Yeah, I think um, I think if I got myself an eye patch, there'd be a resemblance, wouldn't there? Um, yeah, and of course, worked on my accent a little bit, but yeah, the, the, these games are great. Um, I've not, in honesty, played the Metal Gear Solid series or the Metal Gear series a lot. I've bit and bobbed on it and played it here and there. And I thought, come on, these games are cult classics. It's about time I got some more of the titles back, bought them back again, and really got some time pumped into them. So, yeah, I've got a few few in my collection, a few more coming. I'm gonna, what I really want is the PlayStation 3 HD, where you got the whole lot on. But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get them all in time and dig them up and have a really good session. And when I do, I'll record. Cause I'm, I'm trying to record my game sessions. I love these playthroughs. It gives me more motivation. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty. Oh, I'm naughty. I normally open up here. This is a pretty decent um, condition. All seems to be included, all the goodies. Um, oh yeah, I'll, I'll open up the NBA Jam. I apologise, I'll open it up. Good condition, everything included. As I like, if I can afford it at the time. So that's this week's pick up some things to show. The, admittedly, the Rad 2X isn't something I picked up this week. That's just something I wanted to show you. I got that. That was delivered in, I believe, September. But I've got so many bits and bobs to show, I forget. But it don't matter. It's not always having to be what I've bought this week. It can simply be just what to show you and things. Because, you know, some people appreciate seeing these items, don't they? I mean, I sometimes do. I look on other people's Instagrams and um, YouTube videos and see some of the, the equipment they've got. And it's like, wow. Because either... I never knew it existed, or I always wanted one, or it's just a blast from the past because I had it. So there you go. Um, some a little bit of news in the gaming world that interests me. It's nothing fantastic because I got to admit I don't go hunting for news. I just hear bits here and there. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this already, so I apologise if I have. I don't mean to repeat myself, but I'm a I'm a devil for that. Um, in the UK, our lockdown has come back. We've got a month's lockdown now. Um, and a lot of shops are closed, more open than what I expected, which is strange, but it's not really a true lockdown um, for our international um, viewers because schools are normal, many people's jobs are normal, and more shops are open, so it's not a true lockdown, it's like a semi-lockdown, which I don't quite get who decides what. I, I don't get how um, school is safe, going to a shop isn't but whatever I'm not in charge of the country I'm just a person reacting to it all like everybody else but yeah so anyway with the UK lockdown and I apologize I apologize for this already but the um the new consoles the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series X and S because most of those shops are closed you won't be to go in and just buy them like you traditionally do so from what I understand, a lot of shops are doing a click and collect service. So if you were thinking, oh, what's the point? I'm not going to bother. It's worth looking into it because you can still probably get them. Assuming they're in stock, that's the, the part I can't really guarantee. But I know a lot of them are doing click and collect services. So for you guys, the show goes on. I'm not getting one. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but there's no harm in saying it. Um, 
I, at this current time, don't feel that they've got enough to offer to make me want to spend that kind of money in this hard time right now, this difficult time, because I've got an, my most modern console is my Xbox One X, and I'm pretty happy with it for what it is. It's got, I've got loads of games dating from retro games, retro remasters, some of the modern games, I've got Xbox Game Pass, I, I own, personally own, you know, f digitally, I don't, I don't, I own digitally, um, perhaps 400 plus games on the Xbox One X. Um, that's not including the gold games that you only keep as long as you have a gold account. The gold Xbox 360 games and some of the Xbox original games you actually keep permanently, they're mine, but excluding gold games and, and Game Pass games, I must own about 400-ish, so... I don't buy physical media for the Xbox One because I soon learned that when you buy the game, in many cases, not all I'm sure, it's more like buying a download code because you should try this one day. Get a stock Xbox One, don't have the internet, and plug a game in, and to, um, plug a game in, insert a disc in. Often the game is not in a functional state, you've got a partial, that partial amount of data on the actual disc. And is it unplayable? So that to me is pointless. I buy physical media to have the whole game. Now, if it's a more modern console, if it's got a patch that makes it even better, great. But I don't want the patch to be mandatory. So I don't see the point in owning a game if the disc isn't the actual game. If it's part of the game or, or quite often games are purely downloaded down on the internet. You just put in the disc in, as I say, almost as a download unlock. And that... I don't know if the PlayStation 4 does the same, but I learned a lot of games on the Xbox. So that, that defeats the object of physical media, because the idea of physical media is if your game, whether your console has the internet or not, if ever the server's closed down, you can plonk the disc in and play it basically for the rest of your life, assuming you take steps to keep your consoles updated, you know, keep your consoles fixed and all that, and your games in, in you know, in good condition. Well, I if I can't do that, because one day Microsoft will close down the servers, and then, I don't know what percentage, but a large percentage of my games will be nothing. They'll just be cases with a disc inside. That's worthless to me. Um, so I, I would rather have them as digital downloads, and then I know where to stand. If they close down, they're gone. Buy. I, I don't. I don't actually buy games anyway. With cash, I um, get them on gold, and it, the Xbox 360 games and original on gold. And also, I do the um, Xbox surveys and things you know the points and with the points i get game credit so i i don't actually buy games with my own money so if ever the servers closed down in this scenario and i lost my software it would sort of be that's annoying but say la vie i didn't actually spend a penny on it so i'm not fussed but no so i don't have any game discs because that i know it probably sounds strange but we all think differently and that's my per perception and perspective and people on steam and stuff they'd understand what i'm saying because they, they purely are downloads anyway. So I'm completely digital on my Xbox One Digital. On my other consoles, no, I'm, I'm more physical. Um, I forgot my original point now completely, but that's all right, isn't it? But yeah, my, oh yeah, my most modern console is my One X, and yeah, it does everything. I've got a eight terabyte external hard drive, um, a lovely one, a great big one with a fan on it. I've got a one terabyte internal storage. I've got everything. Um, I don't care about download times because I'll just grab a coffee or something or my, you know, we'll run off and do some business. So I'm not fussed. Um, I'm cool with it. And I've seen the Xbox One S and One S, uh, what was One S, Series S and Series X. And I don't see anything they're bringing to the table that I need right now. Um, graphically, I don't see much improvement because I'm not, my eyes aren't sensitive to frames per second. So whether it's 30, 60, and so on, I don't see a lot of difference. Um, graphically, my Xbox, Xbox One X seems not much different to me. Now I know the, I know eventually the Series X will probably get some titles made exclusively for it, and perhaps they'll blow my 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 Xbox One X out of the water, and then I'll go, wow, I see the difference. But at the minute, I don't. So I'm cool. And, and the good thing about waiting is the prices will drop the platform will mature any bugs in the hardware like rings of death and lights of death will all be ironed out and overheating so i'm happy to wait two to three years 
I mean, I definitely would get the Series X over the Series S because I, I'm also because I, I am a sucker for physical medium. I buy 4K Blu-rays. I love 4K Blu-rays. and Normal Blu-rays where applicable because I like. People say, you idiot, stream in, stream in's the future, I just have anything I want. Yeah, I say that until the internet cuts out, and then I've got nothing to watch. And then I'm the guy going, no worries, I put, I'll put in my Avengers collection in 4K. And in addition, I don't care what anyone says, at least in Britain, um, in the UK, streaming does not look as good as for physical media in terms of picture and sound quality. My 4K Blu-rays blow anything on, on, on Netflix or Amazon Prime out of the water. And I, don't, I, don't, I would not listen to anything on the contrary to that. Um, and I do love audio visual quality, so I've got a nice TV. So, yeah, it's my opinion. I'm not trying to tell anybody else what to have. I'm only explaining my thought train. I'm not, I don't, I'm not fussed if somebody has a preference. I can see the argument to streaming because you've got no, no space taken up. You've got a massive collection, but I've got my points. But I, but I have an Amazon Prime, so I have the best of both worlds. I've got the streaming content, but I also like the physical medium. But when it's a film, I love, I'd rather watch it in 4K on my 4K display and my Xbox One X and my 4K TV and, and sit there, you know, live the dream, making it into a, and this time this year where we've, our cinemas have been closed, I've turned, it's almost like having a cinema at home, so I'm cool with that, um, but each to their own. Um, yeah, also, I'm a bit late to the party in saying this, but just in case no one here's heard of it, Argos have been selling off old 3D, well, brand new, but old in terms of technology, 3DS um, games and accessories, really cheap. And it's the, once again, it's their click and collect service. Now I can't take advantage of this because my town doesn't seem to be doing that. Our Argos closed down at the start of this lockdown. We've had no click and collect, which has drove, driven me do lally. So I've personally missed out on all these deals, but I don't know what they've got left, but they seem to be doing that. And you can get, I'm talking 3DS games for a couple of pound, one pound, two pound, three pound some of the accessories and if I had an if I had an Argos click and collect near me I'd have been gathering them up for months and I don't know how much longer this is gonna last so rather than me being late to the party you could say it's like my last warning for anyone who's, who's not heard of it yeah um, in terms of social media um, I, I've now got a tumblr account um, it's the real retro bid it's called it's a bit like my Facebook Facebook and Twitter account, it more sort of duplicate posts what's on my Instagram. But you can still go on there, look at my content because and, and engage um, on any of those. Because sometimes people say, you know, I don't want to use Instagram. So if you prefer one of the other platforms, I'm on there and, and you're not going to miss out on anything. Because um, my um, social media presence is, is growing quite quickly, especially on Instagram. But I'm hoping the other platforms are going to shadow it. So yeah, if you if you if, you're, if Tumblr is your poison of choice, or Facebook, or Twitter, I'm on the, all those. So please come and check me out and have a chat and, and comment and engage. Yep. Oh, and um, Wednesday, I'd, I'd in terms of my um, Wednesday playthrough um, series that I do, I had a disaster on Wednesday. I'll, I um, I'll, I'll give you a bit of an explanation. My original way of capturing game footage. And potentially streaming was I had my Xbox One X using a feature where my laptop has a companion app, an Xbox companion app, and it streams from my Xbox One to my laptop, and then I can record using the Xbox Game Bar. So I had a cheap inbuilt streaming method that seemed to be pretty robust. It seemed to have decent quality, decent frame. A lot of my recording has been from that, you see, and you wouldn't know. No capture card, no fancy cables, just boom. But Wednesday, for some reason, the companion app didn't seem to work anymore. I think Microsoft are starting to phase out the features because they want the series S and X to have all the good stuff and try and give people like me more of a reason to jump ship, which, are, which I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping it was just an update that's going to fix it. It was a bad day because I, I don't like those sort of practices. And Microsoft are, Xbox generally are very consumer friendly these days. So hopefully I'm wrong. But anyway, so I was like, oh, and I was obviously getting stressed my standards of stress which means I sort of blink a bit more um, so I um, tinkered and couldn't find a solution in the end I had to get my capture card my new capture card out and do a um, setup and I was having loads of problems because I don't know what I'm doing I'm still learning um, I managed to get it but in the end I couldn't get my Xbox to, to talk nicely with it but by the time I figured out what the problem was 
I had Suicide on um, on the PlayStation 3. On the um, you know you download the game and it runs on the emulator in the PlayStation 3, the built-in emulator. So I did that. So I started a playthrough on Suicide, which is no um, no massive downgrade from Final Fantasy 7, is it? It's, it's it's just as good a game in in some people's regard. So. I've got those two running concur concurrently now, so I'm going to be alternating to keep things interesting. Um, so, so I'm going to be, I've been tinkering, and by by this coming Wednesday, I'm hoping to have all the bugs ironed out. I've got the, the sound quality in that playthrough wasn't as good, but I, I managed to, to, to turn my mic down so it's within safe level, so that shouldn't be a problem anymore. So hopefully I'm 100% back in business, and in a way it gave me a push to abandon my... Xbox One dependent um, streaming method and recording method and go um, on my capture card because that's what I bought it for. I bought it for to have a, as professional as possible set up for the, you know, the budget I'm on. So that's fantastic. Uh, I wanted to give a heads up on that in case anybody was looking forward to the next part and then they seen so we could and they were like, what? I did explain it in that video, but people miss stuff. So I like to say it, you know. Um, yeah, so that covers that. Um, I wanted to give a quick gaming memory before I wrap things up. Back in the day, um, in the sort of 90s, I was a massive PlayStation 1 person. I mean, PlayStation 1 is my favorite games console, console of all time. I love it, I've got such good, and it's a combination of good memories and simple, you know, the bias that comes with good memories and the times you were in your life at that time. And the fact it was a brilliant console with a diversity of software behind it. Um, and me and my um, old friend, we used to love playing Command & Conquer Red Alert. I'm sure you've all heard of that, or most of you have. And if not, check it out. Um, and we used to get two PlayStation 1s, his and mine, a link cable, which was like a wire with two plugs that fit in the back of each PlayStation, and two TVs. Of course, in them days, it was CRT only. LCD TVs weren't mainstream, or even invented, probably. And we, we used to, um, they only the small 14-inch TVs, and we used to um, play link up and what we did was we would when you start the game up in link up mode you'd have two computer ai enemies you'd have you you each of you you know you'd all spawn on the map as usual and if you press select on the control pad once each you'd ally so your troops couldn't shoot each other and then what we do is we try and be clever one of us would go to the other with our our starting vehicle and us and, our, and the forces we began with and we'd make a joint base so we and we used to go on this big green map i can't remember the name of it massive map for the time probably not massive by today's standards and we'd build in this base in the top right corner and there was a cliffy sort of ridge bit beneath us with a cliff so it was covered from enemies getting us and the only way into this base we'd have because of the cliffy ridge would be left or right the complete under of the base was completely impregnable you could shoot if you had distance weapons but you couldn't physically storm in with your troops so we'd build a massive joint base, defend each exit each, and then send all our harvesters out and build our economy and our defences. And um, this game, unlike a lot of modern RTS games, never had a unit cap. Um, which sounds really amazing. Problem was, the hardware we were playing on very much had limits. So we're there, we're there mining all the, um, all the ore, 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 or Tiberium, or whatever it's called. And then suddenly... The whole game goes to a standstill, cripplingly. And it's like, whoa, what's that? That's not right. So we both decided to pull our harvesters back to base from the from the ore in Tiberium, and they're, and they're, and they're crawling back. And then suddenly on the map, the radar map, we see like a sea of two different colours. I can't remember what it was. Say for example, yellow and blue. This sea of yellow and blue in our radar. And it's like, whoa. That's the enemy's forces. So we looked in and, and, and like this army, I mean, hundreds strong of enemies, enemy tanks and troops. And we both managed to, so we both obviously pulled in all of our harvesters in the nick of time, thanks to our early response, pulled all our sort of forces to the to our gates each, you know, closed the gates off with all our troops. And, and we had this war and I'm talking hundreds, you know, hundreds of enemies, and it fought, and with the slowdown, in, instead of it being an annoying thing, like by today's standards, lag makes you want to punch yourself in the face, doesn't it? Well, this was more like dramatic, it was like a slow motion movie in a film, you know, because we were fighting odds that, you, you know, you'd get in a movie, like Lord of the Rings or something, and we're in this battle, and we're moving troops in, we're constantly manufacturing new troops, repairing defences, you know, 
It was like a total war. It lasted about blooming two hours. Could you imagine that in an RTS game today? A cold battle that's incessant for two hours. Normally in RTS games, they send in little waves and little pockets and, and then dripple, trickles and trickles and it wears you down, doesn't it? The AI does. This was everything the AI could have thrown at you at once. Everything. And it was from two, you know, from two enemy civilizations. And we battled and battled and battled. By the time we finally won and we held the line, like half of our city was in ruins. Our military was either destroyed or steaming from damage, you know, and like we were, our economies were nearly crippled. All we had was the harvesters that they were holding when we pulled them into the safe zone. We'd fought and concentrated and made decisions like a true, you know, general. And we were both exhausted. Oh, I tell you, afterwards, yeah, the enemy, yeah, they did send in subsequent waves later, but they never attacked us in that way because I think... It, it was it broke their economy as well because the heart the um, the ore that you mine on the map it respawns but it respawns shockingly slow so if you reap the land of resources you will eventually make it where you can't sustain your own economy like like the, the earth today really so oh i tell you i mean it, it's hard to convey in world's words but the adrenaline and the strain and the stress of the battle it was something else and said that it, it was weird because the slowdown added something to it because you weren't Click, 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 it's done. It was more like real, being a real general, you're making decisions, there's things happening, response times, and it was something else. And that's, that's, that's an example of why I love the PlayStation 1 so much, because I've got, like the rest of you, I'm sure, modern hardware with these big games, and sometimes a more intimate experience with limitations is better. And, and, and of course, we were naughty, really. We were doing, a, you know, we were doing something the game weren't intended. We purposely manipulated the game's mechanics to form a joint base with joint armies. But that's the thing; it was a social experience, and we were in the same room playing. We weren't in some distant country. You know, this was this was more intimate, more um, a memory, an actual real memory you can carry, not just a gaming thing that was thrown away. Yeah, I mean that that kind of thing does happen when you play this game, but this was the ultimate scale. It was like, you know, it was something like no other game, an other RTS game has given me since. Because the AI in this got its got its act together and it threw everything, no, it took its gloves off. It didn't send trickles and waves that wear me down or wear us down. It threw a legion. So if ever you've got access to that through emulation or the hardware and you can do a link up with somebody, it, it event, you know, uh, it's look at the dice, because sometimes the AI is rubbish. But on that day, fantastic. Yeah, anyway, I won't waffle about that anymore. I um, just want to say, before I finish up, um, remember I do videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Um, Wednesday's a playthrough, Saturday is the Retro Beard Ramblings. Um, this is unscripted entirely. I only have my tablet just for reference and anything to remind me that I do really want to say. Um, so that's why I talk like this rather than um, in perfect like you know like a, a scripted video is and please feel free to engage with me in the comments or, or on any of my social media and ask me any questions I do love it when I've been asked questions so I'd like to have some more if anybody wants to um, and as goes about games it can be anything because I'm a bit of a philosopher in life I've lived I've made mistakes I've learned from my lessons I've had regrets I've then learned to turn the regrets into something positive so yeah um, I, 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 um, yeah, I mean, anything else? Please, if you like this video or any of my others, please like, subscribe, uh, click the notification bell, uh, comment, engage. Um, yeah, um, and, keeps, and thank you for all the support and all the likes and follows, and it's fantastic. Um, well, thank you. This is Retrobid signing off. Have a great weekend. I'll, um, I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.